Hello everybody. We are here with Mark from Last Human's Garage. I'm currently um, building a garage myself, so I don't have a place to really do this unless I want to be in the sun all day. So Mark offered to uh, do this here. So we're about to unbox this here, Do88 intercooler. Sitting next to this beautiful S3. We had to get this bumper off and uh, all the things. As you guys already know the easy stuff intake shrouds bumper you know, turn the wheels we're up on ramps should be a good time and on the way down here which is going to be the next video but uh, i was had obd 11 up and uh we're seeing about 30 degrees over ambient temperature on the stock intercooler with the ac off um and that's with that racing line box unplugged as well so with even more boost it would have probably been even hotter but uh, after this, we're going to do some draggy runs and stuff and see what we come up with. Yeah. Alright guys, so far we got the under tray off. Some of the bumper stuff. It connects it to, uh, what's it called, the fender liners and stuff. Got the little tray out. Intake. We need to get these off. I don't know if I showed you guys. Well, I know I did in the other video. But I'll go ahead and show you again. For the hood latch, this little hickey pops out the back as I drop it you need to pull that out there's a slot kind of there in the back you can get a, uh, a little pick in here and pop it open and this pops right up and you got three t30s that are under this tray and to get this tray off you just pop these up simple stuff we got to get all these off for the headlights Get this bumper off. We gotta get pop these up and out. Get these out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have a hidden bolt? It's just an auxiliary for for coolant. Mm -hmm. it, it ain't for tranny or no. no I wish it was for the trans. Yeah. So we got the bumper off guys, my time lapse cut off early, but there's nothing too crazy to show here. We just turned the pump, put a little cap on it there. Um, I started unplugging things and I realized I should probably grab the camera. So unplug this horn, unplugged the AIT, or IAT, or it's not even that, just the ambient air temp sensor. Um, the other horn pulled this little cover off. Uh, for that, as you can see, look at how thin that is. We're gonna definitely need to upgrade this extra cooler. And unlike the eight Vs, uh, we don't have a trans cooler over here. So we're going to be adding a trans cooler at some point. Probably do, uh, what brand is that? I forget now. They do the radiator and then they have the trans and the auxiliary upgrades. But, so what my boy was telling me is that this this shroud does not disconnect from this crash bar, which like before there was like a thing and you could get the screws on the side and that's how you could like kind of change the angle with it. But it looks like it connects right there to it. So I'm not sure, it doesn't make sense why they would be connected. They, they couldn't be really, cause this is plastic and this is metal, so. There's got to be a way around it. I think from here we might just unbox this just to see what we're working with. Maybe it'll give us a better idea on what to do. So after looking a little bit, oh look, you already done. Thank you, sir. That was quick. It looks like this maybe a bigger than a maybe like a T45. This would looks like it goes from the plastic to this. But either way, we're not gonna be able to get to these until the headlights are out. And nothing seems too difficult though, honestly. We got some some rubbery bits here that will take off the shroud so we don't rip them apart. We got all the little connectors that hook on to different spots out of the way. Got that out of the way. 
it's interesting that the box for this is on the bottom um there's another one of the spots for the headlight it's just pretty cramped in here i don't even know where we're gonna we're gonna have to get get rid of the washer to uh put a cooler here where was that where's your your cooler's on the left side ain't it your or your uh reservoir mine yeah yeah yours is on the left side see Hmm. Well, I meant your uh, your reservoir for your washer. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. See, he's got right here, he's got a cooler remember. in this side. There we go. And up in this side. That's what your boy needs. We're gonna have to figure out how that goes. But I think with those ones, like the Mark Sevens, the coolant is tied into the dsg system so each one warms up the other and you want those divorced because the coolant temps rising will bring your your uh trans temps up and vice versa your trans getting hot will make your coolant even hotter and i believe the coolant is also tied into the oil at some point too so with them being all tied together they're just making everything super hot rather than having dedicated coolers for each system which i think is the move but that's gonna be a lot of money all right, guys, here we are. We're at Mark's last human garage at his house. I'm gonna make this my intro since I should have did this first, but we're about a quarter of the way through the job already and I'm just now getting to unboxing this thing. So uh, shout out to him for letting me come down here and uh, wrench since I currently don't have a garage. We just moved and we're pouring a bunch of concrete right now, lots of concrete, and uh, eventually building this shop. And we're building a, I think a 22 by 35 is what we're doing but uh what really sucks is we live in a like a flood zone so we have to get all these extra things signed so that we can build because it might raise the flood something or other I don't know, a bunch of bull crap from the city to get approved for something but it seems like all my other neighbors have them and they want like five thousand five hundred dollars to do this uh survey to see if adding our garage is going to raise the flood level or something i don't know but here we are we're hanging out yeah. swedish performance do 88 nice and a shirt and a t key tag as you guys can imagine this thing was packaged beautifully look at that they're doing a shirt a hat, we got the hoses, clamps, keychain, sticker. I'm pretty psyched about that. And they had like these molded foam guys to keep everything in place along with the, the poppers and then some foam. Packaged really well. I don't see any damage on it at all. And it got here very quickly. Look at that. This thing's sick. And we got the, all the tabs for the uh, AC condenser and whatnot. can't even see this angle. There we go. Boom. That's actually a really sick shot. I need to get that on camera. Or a picture, I mean. Alright guys. Now that we finally unbox this, I actually need to change shirts now. Figure out where I'm going to put this sick sticker. Um, I think what we're going to do next is get these headlights out. One and two. And that'll give us more room to see what exactly is going on behind here and how we're going to do this. Um, it shouldn't be too bad. I need to get these off too. These just kind of pop, pop in. Got some clips in there that are going to be fun to, to pop, but it really doesn't seem too bad, honestly. So, there's a screw that goes right here, T30. You got one that goes right here, T30. Um, right here, T30. And then one underneath, right here, T30. And you can see you got the safety connector here. And then it connects right here as well. You got a spot for the wire to sit. So that looks to be everything to get this out. Just wanted to show that real quick before we get to going. All right, guys. So right here, we have this bracket connected. You can see this is for the home link. I actually didn't even have to unplug it. But uh, home link goes on the driver headlight. It's pretty interesting. All right. So headlights are out. Looking like a whole 
Skeletor over here. So we just took out these two T30s. These are actually attached. Unlike on my old Golf, they came off. So this is attached right here, right here. We got these little short T30s. Nice. Watch over here. Making notes. I like it. Well, it looks like in here, this is uh, one of the sensors for the hood latch, and you got your uh, crash sensor. They're both right here and right here. This one was a little tough to get out, and you got to remember these little red things pull back. You got to pull them back and then push down on them to get them out. It's a little tight in there for that side. This side, we got those two same ones, much easier to get to, and then we unplugged the coolant temp sensor down there as well. So these help direct air, right? These are actually really nice. See how these are wide right there and right there? They just pop right onto these spots, which is a lot better of a design than the clips that pop in on like the Mark 7. And there's also a little shelf that goes right here across that does the same thing. So we got this left side, right side does the same thing. Boom, boom. I don't think I showed you guys on the headlights there's just like the uh, the drains that route down and clip in to uh, either side. Where's that little shelf? Oh, and there's that little shelf I was talking about. Mark showed me that. Goes right here and they just pop right in. It's really neat. We got our T40 here. And we just took out the T40 that goes right here and right here. Now, what I'm just sitting here realizing is if you look, the plastic you know this whole surround is behind the crash bar up here it's bolted behind it but up here at the bottom it's in front of it so this will be interesting to see how this all works out so we took out all the 16 mils except for this end gave a nice gap we're getting the two remaining t30s here on the coolant line they're easier to get to once you loosen this up anyway, so kind of did it at the right time. And from here, we got to figure out how these two come apart. Otherwise, we're going to have to lean it way forward, like my buddy said, and take the fan off the back and do it that way. I'm trying to avoid that. All right, guys, so we took this off. and Now we put it back on just to show on video real quick. So those T40s definitely need to come out on either side. Get these bolts out. Yep. And then we're gonna we're gonna lift up. Ready? And then tilt back. And we're gonna lift up. And connect it. Are you tied with the wire there? Oh. Uh, nope. Sweet. Ooh. Easy. Nice. Just toss it in that thing doesn't even weigh that much. I'm surprised it doesn't weigh more. Surprisingly light. Yep. Just put this back here. This thing. Nice. So now we are all apart. This is actually, they made this easier to do, I think. At least versus the Mark 7s. Look at this man. What a gentleman. Alright guys, hopefully I haven't skipped out on anything. But before you go to this next part, look around here. Make sure nothing is connected to the shroud. Because the shroud is coming off the car next so we don't want anything getting caught we're getting pulled on you see zip tying this up here just to make sure it's out of the way we don't want to yank on anything there's a lot of plastic clips as you guys know being a volkswagen so yeah it looks good coolant stuff is what we got to be careful about. yeah coolant and ac and should be the only thing yeah. we'll just uh definitely keep an eye on all your things but from here the next thing up is getting these these clips in and what I like to do you see we got these bad boys um, using flatheads and punches and hammers you jam up in there kind of bend it up and then hit it with a hammer to knock them in boom boom and then you can gently tap on these themselves to push them in once you get the clip up into your spots now once you do that on both sides you see he's already ready um, it's pretty easy yep Let's see how quickly I can do this on camera here. So I hold it 
back so it takes the shock out of it. This top one doesn't have a lot of... It's hard to get a grip on it. <laughs> the bottom one came yeah. back. Yeah. We'll get it though. It ain't, it ain't as hard as we thought it was. There we go. There we go. It's trying to come. I'll probably get my finger smashed. I'll do my best not to. Oh no. Oh. I just broke it. Did it? Yeah. Not the clip, but. Easy, dude. Well, see, I, I did crack this a little bit, but I cracked mine. I got some real good flush cutters if you want it nice and clean. And oh yeah, make it look. It was never even there. Yep. I'm crack this right. little guy. I don't think it's going Put nowhere. Your through. There. Good. Not bad. That was only a minute thirty. There we go. All right. So earlier I showed you guys to take these off. That was not accurate. There was only one line coming off the body of the car and it's this one so we pop this cover off that goes to this this right here you can see how the clips go one of those two on this side those two on this side sits right here like this pop this off next thing you're just going to want to make sure you're grabbing the right one that comes off the body we're going to lift this up we're going to pull it back see how that works when you pull inside it it pulls these which pulls the latches anyway so we're gonna swing it around down and just pop it right up out of there and now nothing else should be holding this shroud to the car and to get the shroud out um, the way the radiator and stuff sit in there there's these tabs down at the bottom so this thing ha kind of has to tilt and then the radiator and stuff has to lift out because it's got these little oval spots down here that they pop into. I don't think I ever even took this off, dude. I just swing it. Yeah, that's... Carefully threw all these lines out to the side and just did my work and then carefully slid it back. See, the AC lines here are... Like, there's no way to get them outside of... This is all one piece. So I'm going to have to disconnect it from here and fan it out as much as I can. The whole shroud isn't going to be able to, it's going to have to like kind of follow these lines as it opens up, which isn't too terrible, but it makes it fun for when we're trying to get this last bottom one out. Anything. So this is where we got to. We are fanned open for the most part. So it's kind of difficult. Not gonna lie, this is probably the most difficult part about this since you can't, you're very limited with how much you can move. But, so you can see the radi or the, what's this thing called? Condenser. The condenser tabs, one, two, three, way back in there, and four, right there. And they also have these, where'd that thing go? This goes in front of it to try and uh, route air to it. So if you look at the bottom of this, this is it. come on, focus buddy, focus. Focus. Please focus. Okay, there we go, now we gotta focus. You can see, you kinda just gotta widen these out um, like this. You gotta spread them apart and they pop off. Top one, it clips on, so we just kinda like pulled it up as high as we could and just kind of bent it down to get that off the other side I can't even get out so it's still in here this guy right here flopping around but uh, see the radiator or the condenser sorry just pops into this clip on both sides you got to push in on the top I don't know if you can see that too well pushing on the top on both sides and it, it lifts out then from there we kind of just moved everything slowly while adjusting this making sure everything is balanced and we just slowly brought this open like as a fan and, uh, the main thing is this condenser you got to make sure you're not busting these lines 
or break in anything very expensive and very very toxic um, chemicals in there but we're fanned open and we just got this top tab here this one's oh you already got this one this one's spread all we got is that and yeah. we get this thing out and then down here you can see this is where the inner cooler goes into it has these oval tabs on both so this one this side's still in there because i can't get enough leverage because of this so we're going to get it disconnected from the radiator now and then uh see what we're going to deal with i'm going to put it on uh what's it called time lapse and then once we get it out we'll show you how we did it oh yeah down in there yeah, it gets rough all right guys look at that look at the difference here now the plastic tanks make it seem thicker than what it is i think but you can see the ends are much bigger over here looks to be smoother i like this transition here much thicker over here i mean this is probably twice twice as thick if not more Yeah, that's a good angle. Look at that. Really tell the difference. Yeah, it really wasn't too bad. You just gotta lift these these clip down into the intercooler right here. So I kind of had to lift the radiator up, pull it back, and then once the radiator weight was off of the intercooler, uh, you could pull it right out of the little oval guy down there. So what we'll do, we'll go in, we'll slide them down, slide the intercooler down in probably tilt it back a little bit and then pop this bad boy right on you got your clips up top it'll clip in up here here and here and then we got the hardware here in the bag for where the uh, AC condenser is going to go in Wow okay so we're definitely not done get off my butt chin here um, so a lot of intercoolers that I do, this is probably maybe my 10th intercooler or somewhere near that. A lot of times you have to get a file and either file down the plastic or the metal on either the clip side or this side. Um, this thing just clipped. That was like the best sounding pop. It popped right so in. Like, solid, right? Yeah, that was satisfying as hell. I wish I would have had the camera just sitting here for it, but um, that was like perfect. That was, that was nice. So next up, we got to get them into those little oval spots and then get this radiator. See, they have um, these tabs that go on. This one doesn't have a tab. It just screws right on through the hole. But uh, yeah, it's going really smooth. Looks really good. All right, guys, so she's basically in. We just need to press these bad boys on. I went ahead, I actually broke my three millimeter off in there. Uh, you can kind of see, yeah, broke it off in there, but all the rest are in. It wasn't hard at all, and then we put these plastic bits back on. Don't forget those. Um, and I went ahead, I have expanding foam kind of see it down in there I put some foam under the intercooler and above the intercooler here um, this will expand to half an inch you can get at Lowe's for a decent price oh yeah see it works always got to let you see the foam down in there just to help some air not pass underneath the intercooler um, these little guys right here should help it not going through the sides but we'll see uh, yeah like I said I put some across the top so I'm just gonna squeeze this bad boy back together and then from there it's just Nuts and bolts and some some clips. So close, dude. Pretty easy. Oh, and the intercooler horses, of course. But this wasn't bad. All right, guys, we kind of jumped ahead here. Uh, headlights are probably the more tricky thing after the radiator, trying to get everything lined up. So if you're watching this, take nice close pictures and get a memory of how this 
whole thing sits in here. Maybe get good pictures of where your bolts sit because they, they're not centered. They don't sit in one spot. You have a whole lot of adjustability left, right. The angles, like always. So take a look at all those. You got one, two, three, and four and they're all kind of can be adjusted at any of those points so getting this back on was kind of um awkward you definitely need a second person to help take note of the orientation that it sits it's got these little pins that sit on one side of the holes there's two holes in you so you got a pin there and a screw here um that was a little interesting uh the way the headlight drain things they have like little routing spots to go down into here here down through this i don't even know if this is supposed to go through here too but it is um looks like it could also go through right here or really anywhere else uh, just general look around of where everything goes i think from here don't forget uh the coolant hose up here as well and uh yeah, I don't know. what else you got anything no, it's been going super good actually. Yeah, this is going a lot smoother than what we thought. I think it's because we're thought. here with the luck, because if it was me looking <laughs> me last night, my car won't even run, so you're bringing me good luck today. Alright, changed my shirt and threw a hat on. The car is looking damn good. I really like the way this angle is with, uh, with everything, but everything's on. Hopefully, I, I went through this decent enough for you guys. It, it's not. The same as a Mark 7. I'm not sure if it's the same as an 8V, A3, or S3. It's pretty, well, no, obviously it's not. It's similar, but uh, I'm sure you guys can figure out anything I, if I hopefully didn't forget. But if I did, um, just drop down in the comments. I might be able to help. I took a lot of other pictures and stuff. So you check out my Instagram, BR32YCE, and Mark's Last Human Garage, which is also his um, Facebook page and YouTube channel. So. Again, shout out to him for uh, coming through, helping out, using tools, using the garage, and uh, putting our brains together to get this job done. Um, make sure you check out the next video. We're about to go for our first test drive and see what um, the AITs look like. And then eventually at some point, hopefully in that video, we're going to do some draggy runs. Compare those to um, before. And uh, yeah, plug in the racing box again and see, see if that makes any difference. So. Shout out to Do88, of course, for uh, hooking it up. I've been bothering them, I'm telling you guys, all year. Every month, I hop in. We have probably 30, 35 emails of me every month. Hey guys, how's it going? Just wondering for an update and going back and forth. And I saw them post something, or I had posted something about them a couple weeks ago. And they're like, yeah, it should be up about a week. And I emailed them about a week later at, in the morning. And they replied, like, hey, we just put this on the site. And I was like, boom, order, done. So... You guys will probably see a handful of 288 posts for the next week, but uh, these guys are really awesome. And the shipping, I mean, they're coming from Sweden, and it didn't take uh, but a couple of days to show up. So, get them while they're hot. I don't even know if there's even any left, because I posted them everywhere, and they didn't. They only had a handful ready to go, so. But uh, get your name on the list, and uh, get you some. Make sure, like I said, check out that next video, where we look at some data, and I'll catch you on the football.